I'm very excited to talk and taste and smell uh, today's rum. Uh, I've, I've been in possession of this now for nearly two months. This came courtesy of Plantation when they flew me out to, um, uh, to Cognac to go and visit Maison Ferrand and all that. This is the Plantation Black Cask. Now to all my UK fans and US fans, Fear not, this is not a product for us. If we don't get it in the UK, and you, as far as I'm aware, certainly don't get it in the US. This is specifically made and blended for the French, the Danish, the German, Slovakia, and Czech Republic markets. And when I sort of uh, chatted to Alexandra and uh, uh, Nick and Jay, that own identity, that import plantation to the UK, it's like, why are we not getting this? Uh, it was simply because, do you know what? In the UK, we are very fortunate to get most, and I mean most, of the plantation releases. So therefore, bringing this over actually dilutes a little bit of you know, the other ranges. Now, this goes into another thing that I didn't realize is actually, this is actually edition three, which I had no idea about. I just, you know, when I got the bottle, when they gave me the bottle, when I was over in um, uh, Cognac, uh, I was just like, yeah. And it didn't dawn on me to when I get home that I, all the photos and the sort of uh, like knowledge that I've been reading about was actually, it said Barbados in Peru on the bottle. And it didn't dawn on me until I got it home. And I was like, hang on a minute, this says Cuba. So this is actually edition three. We've already missed two. And I, th I think the first one was Guatemala. But don't hold me to that. It's completely gone out of my head and I stupidly didn't make a note of that. But definitely, um, so he, actually, I don't even know which way around it was. It might have even been the second edition was Guatemala. But definitely a previous version, when it was one or two, was definitely Barbados and Peru. And that's the one. In actual fact, I think Peru was the first one because if you if you do search it out on the internet, you will get a, a plantation webpage which talks about that. And it is uh, the first edition. But there is no knowledge, no information out there about this one. I haven't asked Alexandra, I haven't asked Paul um, or McFads, McFadgen um, that kind of talks about plantation. I should have done, I just spurred a moment, kind of filming. I thought, let's bring it out. So I haven't got that knowledge to share with you. So you're just gonna have to kind of go with me for this one. So what is the black cask all about? Well, essentially they are blending two different um, rums, okay? So this is Barbados rum, obviously from WIRD, West Indies Rum Distillery. They've got uh, some Cuban rum. Both have been aged um, out in Barbados and Cuba. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Whatever the word is, I can't think. But both have been aged there, so Cuba and Barbados. Then they've been shipped back to um, France, to Cognac, as most plantation rums are done. But this time, uh, and again, I don't know, actually know whether they're Cognac barrels, but what they're saying is that it then gets transferred and blended and aged into heavily charred or heavily toasted barrels, hence the black cask. So that black, that sort of heavy toast will bring out different aromas, might accelerate a little bit of woodiness, a little bit of sort of that kind of vibe going on. Again, I don't know how long it's been in there. The information on the back of the bottle is in French. I'm actually pretty good at translating French, but the information about that sort of stuff is not here. So a couple of final things before we dive in. I'm letting that breathe because I've only just opened the bottle. So that's been sitting here for about four or five minutes now. Uh, just to kind of breathe and acclimatize. 40% uh, ABV. Now, as I said, not a UK product. So I've gone for euros on this one, a European, uh, kind of the go-to European uh, place. Now, I have seen two massively different prices for this. Uh, the first one I saw was 23 euros. But then when I shopped around, uh, I kind of like five or six websites were doing this at 30 euros. So I would probably go more towards the 30 euros and that translates to 25 great British pounds uh, and 33 US dollars. But I'm relying on you guys in France and in Denmark, especially my German contingent that watches. I know it's quite a few of you uh, Slovakia and Czech. There's quite a few of you Czech people actually that watch my channel. I can see the analytics. Uh, if you've bought this, uh, then let us know how much you've paid in euros so we can have a rough grasp of this. Um, now, the one things I will do, let's go over to this camera. The one thing I will do, see, I, I might not be able to say it, but I can sort of semi-read it and understand it. I'm going to go through the tasting notes on this. There's a couple of words here that I don't know, but the vast majority of the, of the aromas uh, I can kind of give you. So we've got very intense strawberry, apparently. Uh, honey. 
this is the one I don't understand. I've just, I should have translated this beforehand, but I didn't. Uh, Le Fleur de Pommier. P-O-M-I-E-R. I don't know what that means. Fleur. And it's not elderflower, as far as I'm aware. So I don't know what other flower that I'm thinking of. It's totally mem memory block here. Uh, banana. Uh, citron vert. So lime, essentially. Uh, vanilla. Uh, and then notes of coconut. Uh, and Café d'Armande. Again, I'm not sure what that Armande is. Café... Café de Amand. I'm not sure. So uh, we've got an apostrophe. D apostrophe A-M-A-N-D-E. De Amand. Again, I don't know what those two are. Let's dive in. It's been sitting here long enough. It's been teasing me. Let's dive in for the old nostrils. The top note that I'm getting off that is definitely banana. Um, I would say that it's kind of... It, it, it's banana. It's top note is banana. There is a little bit of vanilla uh, on the side there. Definitely. Coconut and strawberry, no. Um, I think it's the banana that's kind of overpowering me for a, for a minute. Actually, I, I take that back. You stick your nose right in there. Perhaps I've got too much in there. Perhaps I need a little bit more of a swell. But you dig your nose right in there. Then I do get that sort of red berry, that strawberry kind of vibe. And maybe, do you know what? I, I stupidly, I've put quite a bit in that glass. I'm, I'm eager. Maybe, maybe I might get that sort of green lime the citrusy kind of vibe on there and i was actually going to say the coconut off there but then the lime hit me first so perhaps perhaps i'll, I'll come back to that i'll do another little nose in the end because obviously i'm going to drink a, a bit of this i'll do a little bit nose in once it's sort of stuck to the glass but definitely banana vanilla up top 100 percent. oh well oh well that was my kind of run um it's got to be young aged it has to be young aged in there especially for the price as well. And, and I dare say it has to have a little bit of dosage to it. But am I going up to the 20 grams, the, the, the edition one? This is edition three, remember. The edition one is on Plantation's website and it does say 20 grams on it. Am I going up that high? I don't think I am. And bearing in mind, the only point of reference I've got, I've, I've had a move around, this down this end now. The only point of reference I've got is the Plantation XO, which is definitely 20 grams of sugar. Um, it's more to me than the Plantation the Barbados five-year-old. I would say it's got a little bit more dosage than that. But I wouldn't say it's right up there at Plantation XO. This is delicious. Is this right? Is this one for rum geeks? No. Let's just be crystal clear about this. I'm not a rum geek. I love my playful, you know, the fun rums. This is a fun rum for me. This is a rum I would quite happily use as a session rum. This is a rum that's not going to kind of, whew, you know, have a little sip and I know I've had one. You know, this is a two, three, four glass uh, kind of rum uh, for me, which I know a lot of geeks uh, and a lot of, I've got, I need a new word for it. I don't mean geeks in a bag derog derogatory way. Right? I'm talking about the ones that just want purely car strength. You know, if it ain't car strength, if it ain't undosed, you know, they, but a lot of rum fans don't want to know. I'm talking about the fun end of the spectrum. So tasting, what do I actually taste? Look, I would go, actually, there's banana there. There's plenty of banana there. I would actually go the barrel aging first. You get this slight bitterness from those heavily toasted charred barrels, that very slight, but very, very quickly, do you get banana and vanilla. It's like an almost a split second bitter ooh, fruit kind of vibe. And it's really bugging me what that amande is now because, oh, hang on, we haven't gone through the actual um, the tasting notes on the actual bottle in French. But I was gonna say, basically what I was gonna say is almond on there. Um, like a faint nod to Disarono. That's what I mean from that sort of thing. But Maybe a little bit of tropical fruit, maybe, you know, the strawberry on the aroma, no. It's very much dominated by the, the toasted oak, the toasted barrels, but then banana and vanilla and that little bit of nutty, almondy kind of vibe going on there. But there is, there has to be, you know, it's not undosed. There has to be a healthy... A healthy glug of dosage to it. 
But for you rum fans, don't let that put you. Nowhere even remotely up to like bamboo diplomatico levels. Not even remotely close. It's just got a, a little bit just to kind of round it off and it's delicious. And you know what? Reading the back of the bottle now in French and then translating, uh, I'm, it, it, again, it's kind of on point of what I'm actually tasting. And it's really pieced together in little, little bits for me. So... Um, Basically, the first bits I don't understand, but uh, patisserie, basically it goes on. What I think this means is like an apricot uh, croissant. I think that's kind of what it means. Patisserie, patisserie blah, yeah, blah, loads of words. I think that's kind of hitting me. To, basically, it finishes off with apricot before the comma. So I'm thinking that means like an apricot croissant or of some description And there. Agree with that. Um... Little, little point, I don't know what the next word was, but we've definitely got pear, uh, and then we've got the zest of citron. Um, yeah, I'm piecing that together. Basically, I'm piecing the apricot. I agree with that, and I think there is actually a little, now that that's finishing, a little touch of zesty citrus nut on it. Uh, creme anglaise, custard, vanilla-y kind of thing. Um, and then we've got praline on there. So praline is properly, I, I would go almond de serrano but perhaps that praline is that sort of i don't know that that, that finish but that ain't too far off the mark and that that's really delicious so look let, 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 let's lay this out on the table a lot of you will know that i am a plantation fanboy i'm not saying every rum they produce is up my street i'm just saying i love what plantation are all about i do I think they produce, you know, at definitely my end of the spectrum, some fantastic rums, entry level to mid tier rums. And if you go down the extreme routes, then yes, they've got proper, proper, you know, geek territory rums. They really have unadulterated, you know, cask strength, beautifully aged rums. They've got some fantastic stuff, but the majority of what they release is at more my end of the spectrum. And I think they, the brand, I think the company is charting that route to take people from the inquisitive on a decent rum journey. I think that's what plantation are all about. And you can have some fun doing it. So that is why I'm a plantation fanboy. Um, because that I did, there isn't much from plantation that I don't like. Okay, so that aside, um, I have to be crystal clear with these things. So, you know, it's... it's, it's Yes, they gave me the bottle. You know, I don't, they're not paying me to blow smoke up the backsides or anything like that. I just love what they're about. It's that simple. I love the UK gang. I love the French gang. I love Alexandra. Alexandra has got so much time in the world for you. You know, he will quite happily just chat. It doesn't care who you are. He'll just chat and educate and, you know, give you stories. It's just everything top down. I, I just love about Plantation. So that aside, let's talk about the rum. Look, if this is 30 euros and which translates to 25 pounds in the UK. All right, we're going to pay more in tax. We're going to pay more in that. So if that ever came to the UK, you're probably talking 32, 33 pounds. All right, so whack another six or seven quid on top of that. Uh, so euros, probably another 10, uh, 10 euros on top of that if it ever came to the UK. Would I restock that? 100% that is on my palate. That is a, the rum that I really enjoy sipping neat. Uh, and to kind of, for the US guys, to kind of relate this, I think it's got more to it than your grand reserve. You don't get the plantation five-year-old Barbados, uh, but the, the grand reserve I've tasted, I've got, I, I do enjoy that, but the plantation five-year-old is less dosed a little bit more and a little bit more body and character to it. Uh, I'm enjoying this more than the Grand Reserve, if that makes sense to you. I hope that kind of you understand that. So am I restocking this? If I could get a bottle, yeah, 100% would. Use case, I'm sipping this neat. Uh, again, I, I don't think it's going to add complex complexity to cocktails. I think if you're, you know, if you're thinking, oh, how can I adapt to cocktail? I don't think it's got the depth to, you know, add that to cocktails but certainly mixes coke definitely ginger definitely you know the stratford sodas in the uk definitely it's definitely a mixing it's just not got oomph and power to kind of you know take cocktails in a different direction so for me neat sipping all day long your favorite mixer 
banana-y, again, different to Jamaica, but just banana-y, vanilla-y. I'm, I'm really sad that we don't get these in the UK, really sad, because that is up my street.